Good morning, everyone. This is Cassie Stumo. I am the Marketing Specialist here at EAC. We'll begin today's session with an intro of EAC, and then Emily Pinto from PTC will be presenting to us um, on how you can use multi-CAD designs all in one place with the Creo Collaboration extension. Um, Everyone gets a recording after the session pending any technical difficulties. Please feel free to ask questions along the way and we'll answer them after the presentation. And excuse me, I'll pass things to Shannon to do the intro um, and you can take it over whenever you're ready. Great, uh, thanks Cassie. For those of you who don't know who we are, I'd just like to start out today with just a quick introduction of EAC. Our mission is to transform the way companies design, manufacture, connect to and service their products. We are not only a value-added reseller for PTC, but we are the number one solutions provider for PTC in the country, something EAC is very proud of. We have experts in 22 areas of product development and are located all over the US, with our headquarters being in Burnsville, Minnesota. We offer our customers everything they need for product development, such as Creo CAD software for product design, service life cycle management <laughs> software for managing service documentation, and software that helps you manage your product data, such as Windshield, ThingWorks, Navigate, and our customizable EAC productivity apps. We implement the Internet of Things and augmented reality into business strategies to jumpstart initiatives around digital transformation and connecting all things in your company. We assist with the design and engineering projects like FEA, simulation, reverse engineering, and proof of concepts for our customers. And we offer webinars and PTC certified training courses for continuous learning. We are also a commercial reseller for Formlabs offering their latest products in additive manufacturing. The Form 3 is now available with packages starting at $34.99. Any previous owners of Form 2 prior to the Form 3 release date of April 2nd of this year will be able to receive $500 off of their order of the Form 3 until June 30th. So you still have some time to purchase the Form 3 at a great discount. So do please keep us in mind, we have solutions to help your organization save time, money, and time and money throughout the product development process. Thank you for taking the time to listen to who we are. I'll now hand it over to Emily so she can get us started. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Emily Pinto. I am an application engineer with PTC. I work in the Virtual Center of Excellence and we uh, specialize in high level overviews. So today I'll be going over uh, the Unite technology and our collaboration extensions. Some of the challenges that this was going, uh, hoping to address was uh, issues around non-native data uh, coming into CAD. So this isn't just Creo, this is a uh, across the industry that it's difficult to bring in non-native data. Uh, and so some of these issues uh, come up when you're talking about a couple different situations. One is uh, vendors providing non-creo data, customers needing non-creo data, and company mergers that require you to combine different data sources. So if you've ever worked in one of these situations, you know, I'm sure you'll know that it's hard to import non-native data into a CAD software. Again, not just Creo, but any platform. Sometimes things fail. Uh, the imported model can be messy. Uh, it gives you two models to manage, which can be difficult. And once you have your model imported, it can be hard to revise it when revisions are made on the original model. Um, this can be very time consuming to push revisions into your version that's in Creo. And it com this comes with high IT costs and it's difficult to manage all these different packages going back and forth. And the solution is Unite Technology. And Unite Technology allows you to open external CAD data natively in Creo without converting it into Creo data, as well as allows you to save and easily update models and improves that import function as well. So some of the capabilities around this, uh, the first one is the traditional import capabilities for common formats. Uh, importing with Unite technology really, really minimizes errors and, and there's a lot of improvement around this. The open uh, key formats, this is Unite technology allows you to open in Creo in the native format and only convert parts that you need to make changes to. So being able to bring in non-native models without importing, it's gonna save you time. You don't have to wait for it to import. You don't have to import, deal with any import errors uh, and you don't have to waste time cleaning them up because uh, your model is gonna be exactly how it was in its native format. We also have save as capabilities. Uh, so if you need to send one of your Creo parts to a customer, but they need it in 
one of these key formats, no problem. Uh, instead of saving this model as a creo part, save it off as SOLIDWORKS or CATIA or NX. A key point to mention here is that all this capability comes right inside Creo. You don't need licenses for other platforms. Uh, some capabilities come with the base Creo license and some are available through one of our Creo collaboration extensions. And we'll talk about all of this uh, some more in a second. So we like to break this into two real use cases for the Unite technology, consolidation and collaboration. So consolidation focuses on enabling organizations to standardize on PTC Creo in a cost-effective manner, while Collaborate uh, is the, the use case for enabling organizations to work more effectively with internal and external partners using various CAD systems. Um, so we'll talk first about the consolidation. And this is where these, these two capabilities, import and open, uh, come into play. Uh, so these abilities are available in your base, your base CAD license. Um, so if you're on uh, Creo, I'm sorry, your base Creo license. So if you're on Creo right now, you have the ability to both import and open. So to so take a look at what that uh, kind of looks like, uh, somebody sends a bunch of different uh, files, uh, SOLIDWORKS, CATIA, NX, and if you want to bring them in, uh, you can do an import. And these are now Creo part assembly files that I can work with. And, and this is the traditional way most CAD systems work. And we still have this, and it's, it's very much improved uh, with, with Creo today. But now we also have the option to open those files. So if you bring those files uh, in, in by, through an open into your top level Creo assembly, they still reside in their native format. And this can be a really powerful thing. So then if you need to make a change to one of these part files, uh, at that point, the system converts it to a Creo file. And it's more of an on-demand uh, import than having to do it all at once and, and waiting for the whole thing to import. So to look at the collaboration, we've covered import and open, uh, and collaboration gives you a couple more capabilities uh, that are available in our collaboration extensions. Um, so first, we still have that open for opening non-native data. Uh, of course, you still have the import as well, but now you also have the ability to update. So if somebody sends a new version of your non-native file that you've already brought into your, your Creo assembly, you wanna be able to easily update your design. Save as capabilities are great for supplying people uh, with CAD data that they need in another format. So uh, let's look at those. Let, let's look at those for a second here. So here we have our update. If you bring in some CAD files in their native format, incorporate them into your Creo assembly, and then you're given a new version of those non-native files, you can do an update to update your version. They stay in their native formats. They stay in your assembly, but anything you've done with it gets updated. And then our save as, once you have your model, how you like it, some Creo parts, some non-native parts open in their own format on Creo, you can move them, put them out in the format that you need. So you can save those as a different file type. So I can move now into a demonstration of what that looks like in Creo. So here we're in our uh, Creo environment. And we're going to bring in uh, a part that, that we don't make ourselves. Uh, for this example, we are making a razor, an electric razor, but well, we, don't, we don't build the motors. We get those from a vendor, and they happen to give them to us in uh, an NX file type. So with our open capability, we can bring that in very quickly and incorporate it into our assembly. So you'll notice there's no time waiting for imports and, and no time uh, spent trying to fix any geometry that may have failed. So being able to incorporate this easily into our multi-CAD assembly, we're going to bring in another part that we've made uh, to hold this motor in place. This is our sheet metal part. And we're able to, to use the motor uh, as a reference for, to make sure that our, our design is going to work seamlessly together. So you'll see here we have some tabs sticking out through the sheet metal part. And we've waited for the motor to make sure that these tabs these tabs are going to align with the holes in this sheet metal part perfectly. So we can create those now using reference geometry from that NX part. So if we zoom in, uh, we're going to be able to use uh, a tool called um, Copy Geometry. And this is from our advanced assembly extension. We're going to be able to select the part 
from the NX file that, that we'd like to use uh, and, and be able to keep our cut perfectly aligned with that. Uh, so then if there's any changes, it, it, this keeps the design intent intact. So you're able to, uh, to make modifications later on as needed, which, which I'll show as well. So here we have a user defined feature and we can place that perfectly around that tab. And then we can create a second one. And we're, we're gonna know that our assembly here is, is working well with, with the NX part because everything's gonna be referenced relative to each other. So in the same idea, we're gonna bring in another, uh, another piece that we've designed to, to come right up against this motor. And we're gonna be able to reference uh, the sides of this motor to, to keep our rubber, we're gonna bring in some rubber bumpers to keep them perfectly uh, up to the surface. So we can activate our part model here use that copy geometry function. Of course, there are other ways to do this, other ways to reference uh, the non-native file. And we're gonna be able to extrude that right up to the surface. So if you're collaborating or you bring in this motor, you know, from maybe this is, is a motor that you've acquired a new company and you're using their design, or it's someone that you collaborate with regularly, uh, you're gonna be able to use these important open functions uh, to bring the motor in quickly and, and easily, and then use some of these reference geometries to push updates more easily. So if you have the collaboration extension for the NX uh, file types, we're gonna be able to update, update changes that are made to the motor, which I'll show now. So we can save our assembly as it is. And if we bring in our new part, we're gonna be able to see those changes are made. If we open the assembly one more time, we can see at the bottom here, it's gonna show us notifications of, of feature changes. So some of our features are outdated. We've maybe received a new file for this motor. They've changed some, some aspects of the motor. And for our, our next version of the Razor, we're gonna use this new motor. So we need to make sure that our assembly fits well with, with any of those revisions. And it's easy to see those differences. Uh, it shows us here in orange and gray, our different uh, tab placements. So this is one of the features that are outdated. This gray one is the outdated feature and the orange one is the new feature. And because we reference that tab when we put that cut in, we're able to just press the update button and it moves our cuts accordingly. So uh, it's very easy to, to push those updates through to your assembly, uh, even though the, the revisions were made on a non-native part. We can do the same thing here for these rubber bumpers. So make this maybe a little bit longer and we're gonna be able to see the, the difference uh, here on the body of the motor as well. So if we look at those differences in uh, the old version versus the new revised updated version. We can see in orange that the shape of the body has changed somewhat. And so quickly and easily, we just press update and our bumpers have been regenerated into, uh, to come up to the surface of the new uh, motor shape. Okay, so I'm gonna move now into the, back to the PowerPoint uh, to show you a little bit about how uh, this can help affect your, your workflow. So this is gonna allow you to eliminate your reliance on third-party CAD solutions. You don't need those solutions anymore because you're able to work well with those uh, file types inside Creo. We're also going to reduce your IT support maintenance and training costs because you don't have to train on any of those other, those other platforms. Everything's done right inside Creo. Now, so going to improve your efficiency, allowing engineers to be more productive in that product development process. Things are gonna be faster and easier, updates more uh, easy to make. Improve your collaboration with internal and external partners using different CAD systems. 
eliminate waste time performing non-value uh, added activities. So all of that time spent fixing the, the data translation errors and recreating parts that you've brought in from non-native data, that's not gonna be an issue anymore. And all of this is gonna help you increase your engineering productivity and uh, facilitate innovation. So here we have our consolidation, a little bit of a breakdown. Uh, you can see what's available uh, for different formats for open and import functions. And then our collaboration extensions, which we have available for um, CATIA, NX, and SOLIDWORKS. So you can see when that update and export is available. That wraps up my demonstration and I can pass it back over to EAC now. Great, thank you, Emily, so much. I just wanted to step in with some closing comments. Right now, we do have a special going on. You can get up to 84% off a bundle of extensions for Creo with the new Creo Design Essential um, package when you trade in your old perpetual licenses and subscribe to PTC software. Uh, please feel free to reach out if you have any further questions. Thank you, Shannon, um, and thank you, Emily, for that presentation. Uh, those of you on the call will get the recording of the webinar shortly. Um, you can find upcoming webinars on eacpds.com forward slash events, um, or if you'd like to see any previous webinars to date, you can go out to our webinar replay library to watch them. Um, thanks again for joining everyone and have a great rest.